Hello and welcome one more time. My name is Alex Centeno with Mercados. And in this exciting tutorial and hopefully short, uh, what we're going to be taking a look at is how to create Instagram Reels uh, where you have this stacked uh, set of videos, one after the other. In this case, we're going to do three, but of course you can do this with four or five. If you're excited, I'm excited. Let's get to it. All right, I am here in DaVinci Resolve 18, and what I have is a set of three clips. Nothing special. All I did was to just rename them here to one, two, and three so that it uh, allows me to keep organized, but you, you can just like drag three clips and be done with that. All right, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna grab one of these clips and I'm gonna drag it into my timeline area, creating actually a timeline. I am not changing any of the default settings for that timeline purposefully. So let me show you what I have here. So if I go to my settings, you'll see the timeline format is 1920 by 10, 1080 and uh, the playback frame rate is gonna be 23,976. Uh, the reason why DaVinci Resolve used this play, uh, playback frame rate is because that's what my footage is in. And so you may get a prompt when you move them into your media pool that is asking if you want to change the frame rate to the one of your clips. And you can, of course, say yes to that. All right, the first step is to actually change these clips into compound clip. So I'm going to right click on top of this one. I'm going to create a compound click and I'm going to call it C1. And then I'm going to just delete this from my timeline, grab number two and do the same thing. Right click, create new compound click and then C2, so on and so forth. So delete this one and now we'll do the same with uh, clip number three. Uh, there we go. And uh, new compound clip C3. Awesome. Now the fun begins. We're going to change our timeline resolution to the timeline resolution to create the Instagram reel. So we go to our years here and we're going to change it to custom. So scroll down all the way or up all the way. And from, uh, from the top, select custom and then um, 2160 by 3840. Everything else remains the same. Hit save. Now we have this 19 by six aspect ratio. 19 by six. No, I think it's 16 by nine. Anyways, um, we have this aspect ratio that is specific for Instagram reels. And so now what we need to do is place our compound clips inside of here. So what we're going to do is grab each one and um, I'm going to do it with audio uh, so that I can eventually select which audio I'm going to keep. Obviously, you don't want the three audios of the three videos there, but uh, I'm just going to do it with the audio for our demonstrations. So here we go. And uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, scroll all the way to the 10 second mark looking here and then I'm going to place a marker there and uh, but without selecting my clip and that's probably a good important tip there if you have a clip selected then if you add a marker it's going to add it to the clip rather than to the timeline and so what I want is a uh, marker in my timeline so I'm selecting there deselecting my clips and then creating a marker. Now I'm just going to uh, trim and I could use all sorts of tools to do this, but I'm just going to basically trim my clips to be 10 seconds long because Instagram reels uh, eventually uh, moved to 60 or 90 seconds. But uh, in the beginning they were like 10 or 15 seconds and if you do reels that are very, very long, you're going to lose people because they're not interested. They're just like wanting to get a sense of what you're doing in a very short period of time. So I would say what I would recommend is between 10 and 15 seconds for an Instagram reel or a YouTube short. 
All right, now that we have those in this way, what we're going to do is move them into place. So I'm gonna select clip number one or compound clip number one, and I'm going to change the position down um, so that we have it right there at the bottom. Then I'm gonna grab C3 and then move it up. And now you can see that actually I have no way of telling how to do proper separations here. Where would it be exactly? And so I'm going to uh, go to my generators or, or my effects and grab an adjustment clip and put it on top of all my clips. I'm going to select a, an open effects for a grid and I'm gonna place it in that adjustment clip. And then let's go to the effect settings to actually change a couple of things. So the row cells, they're gonna be three rows. The column cells is just gonna be one column and the major line spacing is just gonna be uh, one or zero. Now we have like the proper separation, of course, like our clips are not separated properly there, uh, but at least we have the guides that tell us what, what to do, where to do it. You can change also the line properties to make the lines a little th thicker or thinner depending on what the look that you're going for is going to be. Uh, I'm just going to do consistent uh, the horizontal line width and the vertical line width so that this looks like, uh, like the same as opposed to uh, you know having something thicker on the vertical and then thinner on the horizontal. You can do whatever you prefer, but the interesting thing is that this overlay is going to uh, help you not only guide the positioning of the videos, but also um, once we do tutorial number two, which is going to be how to do this automatically, then you don't have to worry as much about the positioning. So go ahead and also change the color. So I'm going to double click on the line color and change it to black. C3. I am going to go to the cropping section and then start cropping to make sure that I just arrive at the guide. I'm going to repeat my settings for clip number two and um, I'm going to do the same with clip number three. Cropping the top and just arriving properly at the line. Obviously, uh, you may want to also um, position your clips not at the upper side of the clip or the lower side of the clip, depending on where you're positioning them, but maybe you want to position them in the very middle of the clips so that in the future, when you're changing these clips for something else, then they make more sense. In other words, you're getting like the best, um, the best part of the clip as opposed to just getting the top and then maybe cropping the bottom, which in some clips may have the most important part. The next step here is, well, let's take a look at what we have so far. So that's looking pretty good. Um, so we have the clips and of course you can change um, the clips as you go and the position of the trim in order to get like the, the specific parts of what you want of the clip. And that's why you actually have compound clips because you can decompose these clips to go back and revise what portions you're going to get of each clip. Let me go here to my timeline settings. And from here, I'm gonna change it to the tabs. Uh, and that way, if I open this in a timeline, then it opens it here without changing or without closing my, uh, my final timeline. Also, and you can obviously click to each one of those. Let's go ahead and grade this so that it looks a little bit better. I'm just going to select the MKDS 2484 Plus Power Grade, which by the way is for sale in alexthecreative.com. Um, so if you're interested in uh, the look of the Power Grade MKDS 2484 Plus, uh, you can purchase it there and it's just like really inexpensive. So uh, let's take a look at what we have so far. Awesome. That's looking really, really good. Um, 
Now, what I did was that I applied the grade to the adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and remove that. And let's do it at a comp uh, compound clip level so that we can change the options of each one of the clips. So what I'm gonna do is just apply the, the grade to this one, to this one, and to this one. And now if I want, I can just, for example, go to this one and say, this is too, too dark. And this one is too dark, but I also want a little bit of like the shadows in there a little more. And I want this one to be a little bit warmer. So I'm just going to also add a little bit of warmth to the, uh, to the shadow area, for example. Uh, and then doing something different for the third one, let's say adding or removing a little bit of the green and then overall changing how dark it feels, something like that. Let's take a look. All right. So obviously the sound is going crazy because I have stacked the three sounds of those clips and I can just revise each one of the clips to make sure that I just keep the one that um, the audio that I want. For now, I'm just going to remove all of them. And uh, yeah, I could add some music to the clip or whatnot. And uh, the next step would be to export this. And once I export, I can just upload it to Instagram. Of course, I have to move it to the phone or you can do uh, some tricks to actually get it to a point where you can post a reel from your computer. But uh, of course, that's not the purpose of the tutorial today. All right. I actually like it better the other way. So I'm just going to go back with my original grade because I was just giving you the example that you can do that independently. and for uh, being able to apply a different grade on each one. So this looks really, really good. I would like for the third clip to start a little bit later. So I'm just going to open this one, C1, and then I want to start where you already see a little bit of the roof of the uh, pier building. So I'm just going to do that like that and go back to timeline and let's take a look. Yeah, that looks, that looks really, really good. Now, why would we do this so such in a complex way to create compound clips when we could just like drag each one of the clips and put them in the timeline and be done with it, right? The answer is in our next tutorial because you don't want to just create one Instagram Reel, uh, social media is actually about engagement and it's about doing something consistently and posting normally. So uh, you want to do more than just one time and then be done. And in our next tutorial, what we're going to be taking a look at is how to automate this process with DaVinci Resolve and Python. And uh, that way you can just select a group, uh, a group of clips and then easily uh, without having to do manual work every single time you just like insert your clips uh, or replace them and then uh, export i hope that this has been helpful for you and if it has please consider subscribing or uh, hitting the like button uh, so many times what has happened to me is that i see a channel that i really like and then i just forget to like or subscribe and then what happens is that I end up thinking, man, that I would like to see a, another video from that person. And what happens is like I have to start looking and searching all through YouTube to actually remember what the name of the person was, etc. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.